All right, guys, welcome to this page of the notes. And again, remember what we're doing here is we are solving quadratic inequalities in one variable, which means we have to solve the inequality and we're looking for the uh, interval that represents the solutions. Um, all possible values of x that satisfy the inequality. And it's going to be a number of values of x, and that's why we need an interval, right? Um, to represent all of the possible values of x that satisfy our inequality. In order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to solve the related quadratic equation, which means that I do x squared minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. Well, I believe I'm going to be able to factor this as a general trinomial. I'm going to set up my binomials. And since my leading coefficient is a 1, I'm going to need an x and an x. And then what I'm going to do is um, I need two numbers that multiply to a positive 2 and sum to a negative 3. I don't think it would take a whole lot of figuring for you to manage to come up with a negative 2 and a minus 1. Negative 2 times a minus 1 would be a positive 2, and negative 2 plus a negative 1 would be a minus 3. Use the zero product property to split these guys up. Alright, now, please be careful. Again, I apologize. When I say graph, I know it's confusing because I gave you a coordinate plane. I apologize. I should not have done that. What really we need to do when I say graph is graph on a number line. So rather than give you a coordinate plane, I should have given you a number line. Which I apologize, I did not do. That's okay, you can draw your own. All right, there's my number line. And I'm going to put the solutions I found on my number line. How about we put 1 over here and 2 over here. And then all I need to do is pick some test points. Well, something less than 1 that's easy. How about a 0? Something greater than 2 that's easy. How about a 3? And something between 1 and 2, like 1 and a half, which would be 3 halves. All right. Now all I got to do is throw those points into my, quad, or, um, into my inequality and test to see what happens. Well, if I plug in a 0, that would be a 0. That would be a 0. It's going to leave with a 2. And 2 is greater than or equal to 0. So this is a true statement. Well, what that means is that that represents one of my solution intervals, and it's going to be a closed circle on 1 because it's greater than or equal to, and everybody headed in that direction. Okay, let's try 3. If I plug in a 3, 3 squared is 9. 3 times negative 3 would be a minus 9. 9 minus 9 would be 0, and 0 plus 2 is 2. Again, 2 is greater than or equal to 0. So this also is a true statement. And represents one of my intervals. Again, it will be a closed circle on 2 because it's greater than or equal to. And it will be everybody headed in this direction. Well, at this point, you're done. You don't need to go any further since this was true and this was true. Um, three halves uh, is not going to be a true statement. Uh, you can throw it in if you want to, but it's definitely going to come out to be false. Feel free to test it if you would like. And then you're going to go ahead and write your interval notation. So it is a bracket. All values of x such that, uh, let's see, x is going to be less than 1, or, sorry, sorry, less than or equal to 1, or x is going to be greater than or equal to 2. And that represents my solution intervals. Pick any value of x that you would like to that is less than or equal to 1, and it will be a solution to your inequality. Or you could pick any value that you want greater than or equal to 2. It also will be a solution to the inequality. And this represents my answer to that quadratic inequality. Guys, head on over to the next page of the notes, and we'll try a couple of more of these. I'll see you there.